What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to give you a rundown and show you all of the different types of tools that I use here in order to be able to wrap a vehicle. Some of these tools range from being able to take a vehicle apart, putting it back together, and so on. Now, all of these tools I use frequently. I don't use them all, all the time, but I do use them frequently enough to show you. If you guys are looking for some more exclusive videos, better coverage, want me to answer your questions, that sort of thing, don't forget to check out ckwraps.com. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you. Premium members uh, do get access to discussion board, uh, location board, exclusive videos, dismantling videos, that sort of thing. Uh, there is a lot there for you guys to actually look at and post for yourselves. Uh, I'll also answer all your questions for you. I'm very happy to do that there. Uh, I can't do that all over the place, so I've done it on ckraps.com for you. Now, I'm gonna give you a rundown of what each of these tools does and why I use them, basically. Some of these things, like I said, we don't use them all the time, but we do use them frequently enough. So let's bring the camera in so I can show you and explain what these tools actually do. First off, we need a heat gun. That's a definite must. Uh, you're not gonna be able to conform the film without a heat gun or rather having some bit of heat. It also helps seal the edges. Any kind of heat gun will actually do the job. I do buy the, the pretty much the least expensive ones possible. Uh, these are about 30 bucks on Amazon. So I'm gonna put a link on Amazon to all, most of these products uh, that are available there for you guys today. Uh, this way you can go and grab whatever you need. Um, again, heat gun, it's there. These are great, I love them. They work very well and they're very durable. They don't break very easily. Uh, I bought $300 heat guns before. I've had $200 heat guns, I've had $100 heat guns, and I have $30 heat guns, and they all last about the same amount of time the way I, the way I handle them. So I'm a little bit more aggressive with the heat gun. Again, if you are, you might not want to invest in too much of a pricey heat gun. You want to stay with something a bit more budget-wise, budget-friendly-wise. Next thing we're going to need is a microfiber cloth. Let's get some of that garbage out of there. Microfiber cloth is important because uh, we're going to use this to prep a surface right before we lay the film down. On top of that, we're going to need some uh, isopropyl alcohol, okay? This in here is just 70% run-of-the-mill isopropyl alcohol. That's about it. We refill this. We use it over and over again. Again, plastic bottles will be in the description below as well. If you need any of these guys, they're very handy to have. Uh, you can stick your own labels on them. It's pretty straightforward. Next up, as far as the fluids go, we need, or I like to use, tack reducer. This is very handy when it comes to using films that are a little bit more delicate or fragile. Uh, this reduces the tack quite a bit. I'd say, I don't know, I'm just going to ballpark at 30-ish percent. Uh, something that you don't want to lay into recesses or around the edges or corners. But so when you're doing a large horizontal panel like a hood or a roof, perhaps the film is very sticky or it's fragile like it's chrome. And you don't want to lift the film up while it's too sticky uh, because you'll leave marks in it like chrome will leave marks in it. Uh, even works with 3M. I, I don't really recommend it with Avery, but it works with pretty much any other brand out there. Uh, it works very well with 3M, Vivid, Hexus. Uh, the films that I've tried so far, Oracle, it works very well, very well with all of them. Uh, again, I mainly use it on like a roof or a hood if I need it. Um, if you find the film is very sticky or the, or the surface is warm, it's going to kind of activate the adhesive, so it's going to make the film more sticky. Uh, this is going to make it so that we don't have the film sticking to the panel as aggressively. And again, very helpful when it comes to the large horizontals, especially when you're wrapping them by yourself. Next up, we're gonna go with the Vivid Shield Guard. Uh, I, I do like this, it's like a polymer solution. Uh, it lubricates your squeegee very well, or lubricates the surface of a gloss wrap very well, which means that our squeegee glides along the surface a lot better with a lot lower friction. Uh, on top of that, it does create like a barrier or coating, so over top of the wrap, which helps protect it, uh, keeps the film nice and moisturized and uh, more elastic over time. So if you use this, you can use it as a detail spray as well, or an application spray. Again, soap and water will do the job, uh, but this is a bit more uh, this is a bit better in my opinion. It lubricates a lot better in my opinion. Uh, otherwise, soap and water does get the job done, but this will help a lot. Let's get into some tapes. So I use a couple of different sizes of tapes. Now, when it comes to masking tape or painter's tape, you can kind of grab whatever you want. Don't go too cheap on the tape because you're going to find that it's going to leave some glue behind. Uh, you don't want that. Here we have one inch. Um, this is just blue painter's tape does the job pretty well. It also removes very well, which is nice, uh, and it bends slightly or stretches slightly, which is nice. We get into like a two inch tape, and a two inch tape isn't quite as bendy or stretchy because obviously it's a little bit wider, but I use this when I have larger areas to mask off. Let's say I'm masking off a whole entire headlight or something like that. Uh, the reason why we mask things off is so we don't you know, maybe slip with the blade or we want the film to release off of that area. It'll help because the film does not stick to this area very well. It's a, very, it's a matte finish, right? So it's very textured, very matte. Film does not stick very well to it. Uh, next up, we're gonna need some cutting tape. 
So cutting tape is very handy when you don't want to basically risk running your blade along the paint of a vehicle. You should be using this, okay? Let's say we're doing racing stripes or anything along those lines. It's very handy to have, does a, does a good job. Uh, doesn't do a perfect job. You can do a nicer cut with your hands, but in the end, you run the risk of actually scratching the paint and you don't want to do, you don't want to do that. So keep that in mind, handy to have. Uh, next up, we're gonna have some two-sided tape. So on this, it's very sticky on one side, and then we remove the other side here, and it's sticky on the other side. So it's sticky on both sides. Uh, this is great for reapplying emblems, lettering, that sort of thing. You do have to trim that sort of stuff out yourself, but it does get the job done, and it does put the, the lettering and the emblems back on pretty securely. Uh, this stuff holds very well if you, if you grab a strong one. So we're gonna get more into uh, the tools, but actually I missed one fluid over here. So another great product to have is uh, ceramic coating. So this is the one I like using. Uh, it's very affordable. You can get about five, I mean, I've gotten about five cars done with this, about two coats per car. Uh, doesn't take you too long to do it. You can charge basically whatever you want as far as doing the coating does, or, or doing the coating. But this is very good to have. Uh, some customers will request it. You don't need to be certified in order to be able to use this product. It's not terribly difficult. Uh, perhaps I should do an actual installation video on showing you how to do this a little bit better down the road, but I, and I will. But this is a great product. Uh, protects against UV lights, you know, water runs off a lot easier, makes, makes maintenance and washing the vehicle a lot easier down the road. So, you know, this is a great product to have, especially if you have a chrome wrap, it'll help protect it quite a bit, or a gloss finish. Uh, it does, you can apply it over matte finishes, but I wouldn't say like dead, dead matte finishes, um, sort of similar to like APA's ultra matte. You, I don't think you'd want to apply that over top. It could change the finish slightly. Let's get into some of these tools over here. So you might see that I have, these are like, these are weeding tools. Uh, these are just handy to have actually when you need to just pluck a little bit of vinyl out from somewhere. Now you do have to be careful, obviously these are metal, so we don't wanna scratch any paint with it. But if you do have like a little bit of vinyl kicking around the bottom side of a corner or something like that, very handy to have. Uh, one tool I don't have here alongside with these are tweezers. Uh, tweezers can help a lot too when it comes time to grab a small little bit of film and just trim off that excess. A lot of cars nowadays, they have composite body panels or aluminum body panels and magnets just don't work, okay? These are, these are great little patches actually. So there's a steel plate right here on top of a rubber or silicone style pad. And this sticks to almost anything that's high energy surface. Now, if this gets dirty, you can rinse it off. You wash it off, I just wipe mine off with, uh, I wipe mine off with isopropyl alcohol. And then it sticks to the surface again, no problem at all. What's cool about this is you can see right now, I'll take a magnet and good, it'll stick right there. So that's, that's what these are for. Um, great when you're trying to put film down on a car by yourself and you don't have the extra hands for someone to be able to help you hold the film, this is an excellent tool to have because you're gonna need to anchor it somehow. Let's move along. We have right here a trim, a plastic trim kit, uh, mainly used for interior pieces, but it does help when it comes to some exterior pieces as well. Like you can use some of these tools to remove mirror caps or uh, plastic clips and things like that that might be underneath the bumper um, or underneath the hood. This will help you get those clips out safely without causing any damage. So very important toolkit to have. I find it's very reliable and very useful. You don't need all of these. I mainly use, I'd say I use that one, I use that one, I use that one. So I use, I use about half of them for the most part. We get into other tools here. Um, as far as, we'll get into more like the tools to take apart the vehicle afterwards. Uh, but these are more of the wrapping tools. So we're gonna get into this one right here. This one is called a swivel tool. Um, basically what you can do with this, and I have a video on this, is you can make your own patterns uh, freehand, basically. It's like, it's like your handwriting. Very cool. Uh, I did a camel print on a BMW a while ago, about a year ago, and this was the tool that I used in order to be able to do that. Very inexpensive stuff, comes with some, some spare blades right there. I do not know if they sell the blades separately or not, uh, but there are quite a few in there, and I think this should last a little while. I mean, I have a whole bunch of them, so because I, I have used them quite often. Let's move along to the side. So right over here, guys, I have um, basically a wrap stick kit, okay? This is also handy to have. Um, these are great for being able to do intricate details, things like that. These are also magnetic. Uh, they do do a good job. I think one is more flexible than the other. The black one is more pliable, I believe, or the red one. The red one's more pliable. 
and the black one is a little bit more rigid. These are great to have. Um, very, again, very handy tools to have. You need stuff like this in order to be able to do a nice job, uh, in order to be able to tuck film into certain areas, that sort of thing. Super handy. Not something that I keep on me all the time, but I do keep them sort of like on the tray or on my uh, toolbox or something like that. I'll keep them around. What we're going to need also are buffers for the squeegees. These are very, very important. Uh, what you choose as far as the buffers go, again, totally up to you. Uh, I do like these ones by, uh, by SignMaker Tools. These are amazing. Uh, glide very nicely, very low friction. You can use wet apply. I've used wet apply on pretty much any buffer in the world. Most of them last quite a while. Uh, they don't just fall off. Now, it might not last quite as long as one that's meant for wet apply, but they do work very well. Okay, so these are, these are great products to have. You're gonna need them because you cannot squeegee over top of the film with just the hard edge of the squeegee. And by the hard edge of the squeegee, I mean this side right here will cause damage. So that's why you can see I have a buffer on mine. I have a different buffer. I have a wet apply buffer on mine right now. All right, next up, let's get into blades. Okay, blades, very important. I use 30 degree blades. I buy a pack of 100, they last quite a while. Uh, we do end up going through them, but very inexpensive. Uh, NT cutter, 30 degree blades, they last quite a while for me. Uh, and again, they come in packs of 100. You gotta be careful with the pack because it's not actually the safest. So when you're taking blades out, you just gotta be mindful uh, and be careful when you're taking blades out, you don't cut yourself. Here is one of my favorite tools. Uh, this is the Rapstick Flex Teflon. Uh, you'll see this in a lot of videos. I use this all the time. It's always on my pouch. Uh, I find it does a great job. Uh, it's kind of like the perfect tool for me in what I do and what I feel like I need tools for as far as vinyl application goes. So this is, not, this is one of my number ones as far as all these tools go. I use it very, very, very often. Uh, do what I use these all the time? Not necessarily, okay? These are a bit more special and intricate or especially specifically designed, basically. This, this one here is a similar one, though, as you can see. It has like that, that hockey stick to it, okay? Just not quite as big, so I get a better coverage or better area with this. And price-wise, this one tool does cost more than all these tools right here, okay? But keep that in mind, uh, you know, if you're looking for something, you can go with this one more on a budget or you can go with this one here if you feel like this might be all you need. Uh, again, these are very handy and they're all magnetic. We're gonna get into my tool pouch afterwards and what I actually keep on me all the time, but let's get through the rest of this stuff right here. So tape measures are very important. We need to be able to measure the area uh, that we're gonna be wrapping so we don't cut way too much or way too little, obviously. Uh, this is a tape measure I don't use very often. Uh, it is pliable, but it is metal, okay? so. You know, we have to keep that in mind. It's very pliable, but it is metal. We could do damage with this and we don't want to do that. So keep that in mind. Here I have a soft tape measure with a magnet on one end. I used to have one on the other as well. Uh, again, very handy. I've had this thing forever. Uh, very handy to have. This you can wrap around bumpers, you can wrap around the whole car, and you can measure out bumpers and large panels all by yourself because it has the magnet so you can stick it down. Even if it's the car's not magnetic, you can take a piece of tape and hold it down, or you can use the gecko patch and put a magnet down on that. It'll hold it down. Again, super handy to have, very soft, doesn't do any damage, right? So these are, these are important tools to have, in my opinion. I use something I use every single time. Right over here, we have magnets. Uh, I recommend having a lot of magnets. Magnets are very useful for having extra hands, basically. These are your extra hands. This is what you need in order to be able to hold the film in place. So this way, you can move it around and, and get it into position before you actually wrap something. Or simply just to hold the panel to the side of the car for the meantime until you clean the surface and then go over there and, you know, I mean, re like reprep the hood. Let's say, for example, you already prepped it, but then you want to wipe it down again. Again, you leave the film maybe against the side of the car for now, then move it over to the hood when you're ready, and then you can take your magnets and move them over to the hood too. What I do is, the reason why I have like, I have like 30 of these things. Um, it's great for doing bumpers, so you can anchor your bumpers all the way, you can roll out your film all the way down the side of the car, and then you can anchor all your ends with the magnets, and then when you cut your film in half to get two bumpers out of one shot or out of one piece, you're gonna need extra magnets for the bottom piece, right? So think about that. You wanna have probably three or four holding each section down, like the top part and the lower part. You're gonna need them. So again, three or four, which means about eight. I have about eight right here. I think these do come in packs of eight. Um, I don't even remember, I've had them forever. Again, something that you buy that lasts quite a while. You don't have to buy these all the time. They last, they last a long time. Now, next up. 
Uh, more of a specialty tool here is a digital thermometer. So if we're looking to post heat, uh, this is a great tool to have. You want to post heat certain areas, okay? And when I say post heat, I don't mean you have to post heat the entire car, okay? We post heat like very deep recessed areas where we're maybe concerned about the film adhering well over a long period of time. Or we just always, or what we always do is we always go over edges and corners anyways. So that's very important. Uh, this is pretty cool. It does a great job. It's going to tell me the surface temperature of the table right now. is 65. It's a little cold, actually. Um, a little bit below room temperature right here. But again, it's going to tell me the room temperature as far as uh, what the table is measuring at right now. Now, when you're post heating, we're going to bring it up to the manufacturer's specification as far as the post heat temperature. And what post heating does is it's going to kill the memory in the film and also self level the air channels, okay, or the adhesive itself. It's going to give you better bonding and it's going to reduce the memory in the film so there won't be as much pullback. Let's get into some more of the actual tools now, okay? And then we're going to get into that funny thing over there in the top. Tools you need. I like this little tool right here. It's handy to like pluck little, little picks, or sorry, little picks, um, the little. Uh, clips underneath the bumper and stuff like that. Sometimes the plastic toolkit isn't strong enough to be able to pry out little clips and things like that. So this is a good, good thing to have. It's just metal on plastic. You don't have to really do any damage. I mean, if you break a clip, you just buy a new clip. It's not a big deal. Go to the dealership and grab a bunch. They're pretty universal as far as if you just tell them you need clips for the bottom of the bumper, they're going to give you clips for the bottom of the bumper. Uh, there's only certain clips for certain areas of the vehicle. You don't need them all the time. Uh, on top of that, it does help to actually get um, some of the plugs undone because you have to push down and my, you know, sometimes your fingers are just too big to push the little, the little clip down. So using this to push the clip down can help a lot. Another tool that you're gonna need is, you're gonna need Torx at some point, okay? When you're dismantling cars, okay? Dismantling cars is, is a process in its own. Again, it's a, kind of like a whole other knowledge base. Uh, I do have videos on how to do this on my website, ckrafts.com, but not all of them, again, it's just I have to accumulate these videos. They don't, they don't just come overnight. But uh, taking apart cars, you're gonna need tools, okay? You're gonna need special tools sometimes. And this is not really that special. It's very common nowadays, especially in European cars. Uh, this is Torx on each side, okay? So this is a smaller one here, obviously bigger, then bigger, and then the biggest, okay? I think this is a T30 at the very top, 25, 20, and 15, I think that's how it goes. Uh, those are pretty much the ones you're gonna need. The reason why I like this is because these guys that come in my actual toolbox, look how wide they are on the, when it goes onto, uh, onto the actual ra ra uh, ratchet wrench. It's way too wide. So if we're trying to get into an area that's, that's a tight squeeze, like a door handle area, uh, where they only leave you a little hole, these are much more effective. Now, I know we can get these here at the department store. As far as the, the brand name goes, these are, these are Mastercraft, uh, but I'm not sure where you can get them in the US or the rest of the world. Uh, I don't even believe they sell them on Amazon, but this is very handy to have. Again, slides in and out so we can go a little shorter or a little longer if we need to. Very handy, quick, quick to change them. Uh, comes with other ones too, comes with Phillips, flathead, that sort of thing. So you're basically gonna need a screwdriver assortment kit, okay? You're gonna need that Phillips, flathead, uh, Robinson, and the Torx set. Over here, we have a basic socket set, uh, very, basic, okay? I, I mean, it's like a 250 piece set or something like that. And you don't need much more than this, okay? The ones that I use mostly, we have an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, and sometimes 12 and 14. But really, I don't use much else other than that. You know, it comes with everything I need here. We've got a hand, we've got a hand one here. So if I, you know, I wanna just do it by hand instead of having the ratchet effect, we just grab this guy, plug it on there. This is good for doing uh, sometimes like door panels and things like that, depends on the area. Uh, I'll use the tool that I feel like suits the area of the best. All right, stick that back in there. Uh, but again, very, very basic stuff to have, guys. Um, nothing too crazy here. You know, it has a half inch drive, quarter inch drive, and I think this is a three eighths, is what they call it. Um, so again, we have an assortment. Comes with even some Allen keys. You will need Allen keys at some point too. Um, you know, how how often you need them? Not very often, but you do need them sometimes too. Another tools, other tools that I would recommend here are swiveling. Uh, ratchet wrenches. Uh, these are handy to have to get into certain areas when you just can't get a tool in there, but it's nice to have this, this bend right here. These are very handy to have. See, I can actually tighten something down like that. I can move it around. I like these. I even have stationary ones that, that are locked like this. They, they're, they're welded all the way through. They don't have that swivel, but these are great to have. The, the ones that I use mostly, uh, this is a 10 mil, 
I think it's 12 and a 14. These are the most common, okay? Uh, it's pretty much gonna come in a set, so I, I think it'll range from like 10 to 17, something like that. That's what you can usually get. Uh, you can see the brand of these. These are Canadian, um, but you can find these probably any hardware store uh, throughout the world for the most part. Let's get into that thing over there in the top. So that thing over there at the top is a steam steamer, basically. Okay, this is, this is actually excellent for removing wraps. It's excellent for post heating wraps. It's also excellent for uh, doing chrome applications, okay? You just turn this bad boy on, um, you steam the surface, and it gives, what's, what's nice about this is it gives a very wide area of heat. So when it comes to remove the wrap, it's pretty easy. This has rubber on it, so we're not gonna worry about scratching anything really. Um, you can put a little pad on there or something if you wanted to, a little microfiber cloth, to get something on there if you're really concerned about it. But again, it's just plastic, you're not gonna do a whole lot of damage with it. Uh, very portable, agile. Uh, doesn't weigh a ton, doesn't hold a ton of fluid in here. So, you know, you can put also put whatever you want in here as far as the fluid goes. Like if you're doing paint protection film, you could do, you could put some tack in here uh, or some slip, sorry. Some slip solution would be nice because then you can have slip on the outside of your film and throw a little bit behind it all at the same time. Um, steamers are very popular when it comes to doing paint protection film. I see them all the time. I see them being used and it allows the installer to do a lot more with the film in the end uh, as far as conforming it goes or bending it, stretching it, that sort of thing. Uh, excellent tool to have. What's in my tool pouch, okay? What's in my tool pouch, of course, we have a knife and I haven't even gone through that yet. Uh, mine is just wrapped in carbon fiber. It is this knife right here for the most part. Okay, it's that knife right there. It's exactly the same thing, um, but I just wrapped mine in carbon fiber for the fun of it, I was bored. We are also gonna need a, a tucking tool of some kind. This Again, this is the Rapstick Flex, my favorite thing. I've even got a backup there. It's always good to have extra. Uh, I don't want it to break and then I run out, then I'm like wondering where the hell I'm gonna get one in a rush because uh, sometimes it might take a day or two to get it and I might need it right away. Next up, air release tool, okay? This is just a pin in a pen, very, very basic. Could you use a safety pin? Sure, uh, it'll do the same job. This is just something that you can actually keep on you. Um, very portable, dependable. Um, we're all gonna need this at some point, okay? Uh, the only film that I've ever encountered that doesn't ever pretty much get air bubbles is Avery. Everything else, Hexus, Orcal, APA, KPMF, Vivid, 3M, they all gonna get an air bubble at some point. You're gonna get stuck and you're like, hey, I don't wanna, you don't wanna use your blade because the point and the tip on this is much wider than it is on this guy right here. So it's very fine and it does help to get the air out of the film in case you do get stuck with an air bubble. I'll stick that back in there. These are a couple of new tools that uh, I got from SignMaker Tools. Very handy, uh, I think they call them beaver tails. Uh, again, this one would be Teflon, I suppose, and this is a more rigid one, the gold one. Um, very handy, I, I like them for corners, like getting under the corners, I can just kind of get the, the corner all tucked in and nicely shaped and, and molded around. Uh, so I've been using these often as far as wrapping goes. I have SignMaker Tool Squeegees. I've had these things for like over two years. Uh, you know, you buy them once, you got them for a long time. Okay, this is soft, okay? This is very soft rubber squeegee. It is also magnetic, okay? So this tool right here is magnetic and they can actually stick together, see? So I love them. Uh, I can rest them on the car instead of holding them in my mouth from, from now on. Uh, very handy to have, especially when I'm teaching because I need to have, uh, I need to be able to talk. I've got a, rigid, a more rigid one here. I don't use this very often. Uh, sometimes I grab it accidentally. This is more for tucking in the edges. So this is a gold squeegee, more for tucking in hard edges and things like that. Like, cause this is just too soft on the corners where it bends a lot easier. I want something a little bit more rigid half the time, not half the time, but at the end of the wrap. So I can tuck into the areas and get the film nicely around edges. So that's very handy to have. Again, it sticks to the actual pouch itself. Again, having a pouch is excellent as well. I never thought having a pouch would be great. Uh, I've been using one now for a few years, love it. Uh, I don't even know how I managed without it before, but it, somehow I did. Let's get into this. Uh, this is, you'll see this a lot in a lot of videos. This is probably the number one tool out of all the tools, other than a squeegee, of course, because I love this thing. Uh, it's a tinting triangle. You can get these on Amazon or you can get them. This is specifically from SunTech. Um, it does an excellent job. It gets seals up and things like that. It's not too sharp or aggressive, so I find it works very well when it comes to lifting rubber trims. You still have to be careful, keep in mind. Others uh, always runs the risk of damaging something, but just take your time. This is my number one tucking tool of, of a sort. Next up, we're gonna need 
a glove. So this is an excellent, excellent glove. This is like, I think it's a Kevlar glove. Uh, does an amazing job from SignMaker Tools. Uh, you know, you could buy it once, you got it for life pretty much. It gets a little dirty, you can wash it, not a big deal. Well, on top of that, we've got a blade box. This is super handy to have. Uh, you're gonna need to be able to put your blades somewhere, okay? Don't just snap them off and leave them on the floor. I used to do that all the time, and then I'd, every once in a while I'd, get a, I'd kneel down and get a blade in my knee, so not, not fun. Uh, you can clip it onto your belt. I just clip it onto my tool pouch. This is metal, so like the actual casing. So I keep it on the back of my, my tool belt, or my tool pouch, so it doesn't rest against anything other than me. But yeah, super handy to have. This is how it works. You just take this little guy out here, it's magnetic, and then you slide that out, and then you dump your blades out. Very easy, very efficient, and effective. Gets the job done. And I've got one more thing here, and then that's basically what I keep on me all the time. We've got a bodyguard Teflon knife, similar to a Snitty. Um, this thing is amazing, actually. It, you can do like circular cuts and all kind of crazy cuts with it. Um, not, why would you need to? Well, when, when I cut out wheel well areas and things like that with excess film, uh, I do tend to make more of a circle. Snitty doesn't like doing circular cuts. Uh, it finds, you'll find it's a bit more hard, difficult to do if you have ever, ever get one of these. This is much more fluent and flows very nicely when cutting the film. On top of that, this is Teflon coated. So you can actually slide this between the release liner and the actual film and cut out part of the release liner peel that off and then lay that area down and then peel off the rest of the release liner afterwards and then finish up your wrap that way. Uh, great for doing sign application actually, that's, that's what that's more for. We don't really use that for color changes. Uh, you always run the risk of dusting when you do cut that. Dusting means we're gonna, we might get paper particles between the cut uh, simply from the release liner itself. Uh, if the blade's sharp, it shouldn't do that, but there's always a possibility it could. So let's move you out and I'm gonna Close this up. All right, guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful to you. Um, again, a breakdown of the tools that I use, what they do, how I use them sort of thing. Uh, you'll find a lot of these things used in different videos. Uh, not everything, but mainly what I have in my tool pouch, you see it all the time, of course, uh, something that I need to use all the time. But the rest of the stuff is, are things that you could use as far as wrap installation goes and doing a thorough and nice job goes. Uh, are there some other things that you might find that you need? Of course, um, you may not be everything that you would wanna have, you might wanna get more. But for the most part, this is a rundown of everything that I use. Anyways guys, I hope the video was informative and helpful. Don't forget to check out my new website, ckwraps.com. Again, link in the top corner and in the description below for you. Premium members get access to questions with me. They can ask questions to each other. You can post pictures, even have wrap of the month going on right now. So a little contest and a $500 and five $100 gift card giveaway. That's about it guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Take care.